All right, guys, so we're out here on the water. And we're going to test out the casting capabilities of the new Daiwa Tatula Elite. And I'll have to say, out here under the sun, in the middle of the day, it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, mounted on this 6 foot 8 Shimano Bantam rod with its silver reel seat. This thing looks pretty sick. This combo looks pretty sick. And of course, I brought out the standard Tatula 100, also mounted on a 6 foot 8 rod. It's a Mega Bass Hayuga. Both of them are medium power, moderate fast tapers. And we're going to see if there's a difference or if we can see a difference between the two in long distance casting capabilities, hopefully. Okay, guys, so this is how we're going to do this. We're going to get right down to business and we're going to start off with a one half ounce topwater lure, the Jackal Mud Sucker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast the Tatula 100 first and see how low I can go on the brakes and see how far this lure is casting. And then we're going to switch up to the Elite, do the same thing and see if we can see any kind of visual difference in casting distance. All right, so here we go. Okay, so with this Tatula 100, the best setting that I could obtain was 10 on the MagForce dial. And that gave me the best distance without blowing the spool up. Now, I was able to reach the shadow line created by those trees, so let me show you guys. So I would say that's going probably a good 40 yards. Okay, let's do a couple of more. All right, reached about the same spot. So pretty decent, I wouldn't say it's jaw dropping. I'm not saying, damn, look how far it casted. But then again, you know, this is a relatively heavy spool. All right, we'll do two more casts. As you can see, there's a, an overrun, a small one in the middle of the cast that sorts itself out. All right, I reached the shadow line there. So that's going to be a good reference point, that shadow line created by the trees. So when we do our Tatula Elite casts, we can reference that. All right, one more. Let me see if I can get into the shadows. Okay, damn, that went like a good 10 foot past the shadow line. Now on that particular cast, there was no overrun. I will say the wind here is very stop and go. It'll stop and start on a moment's notice. All right, one more. Let's see if we can duplicate that cast. Yep, we sure could. So that went a good at least 10 feet past the shadow line there. So now we know what this Tatula 100 is capable of. Let's switch up to the Elite. Okay guys, here's the Elite. And I'm gonna start off with the mag dial jacked all the way up to 20. Just slowly work my way down because I do not want to blow this spool up prematurely and I can't pick the backlash out. All right, so we're almost probably about 15 foot short of the shadow line with the brakes on maximum. So this is looking promising for the Elite. So I'm going to start backing these down two clicks at a time. Now the wind is coming directly into me. Even though you really can't see it on the water, I can feel it. 
but uh, the show must go on. All right, so with the brakes on 18, distance looked to be about the same, probably due to the wind that's coming in. Let's go down to 16. Okay, we're getting closer and closer to that shadow line and we're only on 16 on the mag dial. Okay, so let's go down to 14. All right, I'm getting a little bit closer a little bit closer to that shadow line. Wind was starting to come in. So let's go down to 12. Yep, it's on 12. Okay, so we've just hit the edge of the shadow line. The spool was still very controlled. Didn't see any kind of loops or fluffs in the middle of the cast. All right, let's go down to 10. And the wind is kicking up on me now. I can definitely feel it. So I'm gonna wait till this wind dies down. All right, let's go, we are on 10. I believe this was the lowest that the 100 could go. Okay, so it went probably five foot, probably a little bit less than five foot into the shadow line of the trees there. Spool was still very controlled. Okay, so let's go back these brakes down one at a time now. So this is on nine. Okay, there we go. I believe we have just matched the distance of the Tatula 100 right there. And we are on nine on the MagForce dial and the spool was still very controlled not a hint of overrun so that means we're going to go down even lower so let's go down to eight oh shit okay so that happened and this is pretty bad i think i can pick it out though okay so 10 minutes later luckily I was able to pick that backlash out and I'm gonna give it one more try on eight all right so I was able to do a clean cast on eight and it went probably the same distance as the 100 so we're going to go down to seven now on the mag force dial. Yep, that's seven. All right, let's see what happens. Boom. Okay, so right there, that probably went a good five feet farther probably about a good 15 to almost 20 foot into the shadow line of those trees and the spool was still really controlled and let's go down on the brakes some more see what happens so let's go down to six yep we're on six okay I feel some wind coming in 
So I'm going to wait until that dies down. Okay, let's try out six on the brakes. Oh, and this happened. Okay, <laughs> I think six is the limit. I was surprised if we could even go down that low. So let me try to pick this out. Okay, so since I'm a glutton for punishment, we're gonna try one more time with the brakes on six. One more time, and if it blows up really bad again, that's it. Ugh. Okay, so I believe seven was the limit for this Tatula Elite. So that's a total of three whole brake settings lower than that 100. And I would say it gained probably at least five, five to eight feet longer cast than the 100. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, the Corrado DC didn't really outcast the standard Corrado K by that much either when it came down to it. So all in all, I would say the casts for this lure probably went close to 45 yards. So that's pretty impressive. So ultimately it looks like the Tatula Elite outcast the Tatula 100 with this half ounce topwater Jackal Mud Sucker. All right, it took me forever to pick that backlash out. So I'm gonna do a couple of more casts on seven and see if the Elite 100 can duplicate its previous longest cast. Perfect time now, no wind. Let's see what happens. Pow. All right, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. So that went probably a good 10 yards past the shadow line, probably at least 10 foot past what the 100 could do. Probably close to a 50 yard cast there. Let's do one more. Wow, that was the farthest cast yet. All right. I'm thinking that's probably beating the SLX DC, even though the SLX DC, I believe, was casting a lighter lure. But Tatula Elite 100, okay. So I do believe there is a difference in the braking profile. And of course, we got the much lighter spool as well. So I don't feel so bad now. We're gonna do one last cast, and then we're gonna test the casting range on this thing. All right, wind's kicking up. Let's see what it can do. All right, there was some wind, but still, it casted it out there at least 45 yards. There was some fluffing, probably because of the wind. Retrieve is starting to get smoother now, which is good. So there we go. Now let's throw some lighter lures and see how low this thing can go. Okay, so we've switched up to a quarter ounce square bill. It's probably a little bit over a quarter of an ounce. So definitely a lot lighter, probably won't cut through the air as well as that top water lure. So let's see what this 100 can do with the lighter lure. So got the brakes turned up to 20. All right, not bad. Now the alleged knock on the HLC reels was that they can't handle light lures. So maybe there is some difference between this Elite versus the HLCs of Japan. So let's go down two clicks. Okay, not a hint of overrun. Let's go down two more clicks to eight. 
no, no, it's 16. 16 on the mag dial. All right, we're getting a little bit more distance there. Let's go down two more clicks to, what is that? 14. So hard to read these numbers. Yep, 14. Okay, I can feel a wind coming in. May not show it on the water, but it feels pretty strong. Let's see how it can handle it. All right, no problems. It's coming in from right to left. That wind. Yep, we got to back the brakes down some more to 12. Now you can see the wind. Let's see how I can handle casting into the wind. Pretty good, and that's a pretty strong wind. Probably 15 miles an hour. 12 on the magnetic dial. Not a hint of overrun, still good distance. So let's go down to 10. All right, we're gonna cast directly in the wind. Now it's kicking up. Let's see what happens. Go. Oh. Yeah, that was asking a little bit too much. That wind is getting strong. Okay, so we're not gonna cast directly into the wind, but it's still coming into my face. Let's see what we can do. Damn, that hit the uh, shadow line. Now, granted, the shadow line is moving closer to us because of the sun is starting to set, but I saw a couple of loops in the middle of the cast, so I think we are approaching the limits on the brakes. Let's start backing them down one at a time now. Okay, so I believe the limit is probably going to be 10 for this quarter ounce square bill. Yep, looks like 10 is probably the limit on this quarter ounce square bill. And it casts it out there probably a good 30 yards. So let's go even lower. Okay guys, so we are dropping down to a true 1 8 ounce lure. So it's probably a little bit over 1 8 of an ounce with this snap swivel. But let's see what this Tatula 100 can do. I think it could probably handle it pretty good. Now I've tried the same range of lures with the much more expensive Antares A. And it really surprised me how well it casts those lures. So let's see if the much cheaper Tatula Elite can do the same thing. So we're starting off with the brakes on maximum. All right, with the brakes on maximum, that's going out there probably 50 feet. So that's definitely doable. So let's start backing these down. All right, so definitely have to adjust your release point because the lure is definitely not loading up this rod. But the spool is controlled, so that means we can go lower. So we are on 16, yeah, 16. All right, distance didn't go up. I still gotta adjust my release point for accuracy. So I'm gonna do overhead cast now. Okay, so pretty good. I think we can go lower. Let's go down to 14. The wind is coming in. I can feel it, so this should be Technically a tricky situation for any bait caster, even a bait finesse reel. Let's see how the Elite does. 
all right pretty good distance didn't really go up and i saw some loops starting to form in the middle of the cast so i think we probably reached the limit i'm gonna back the brakes down one click to 13. All right, wind is coming in. This could be a disaster, but let's see what happens. All right, not bad. No fluffing on the spool. I was doing kind of a combination overhead sidearm cast. Let's go down to 12. All right, I put a little bit more effort to get more distance and I think I picked up probably at least five to eight feet. Spool still controlled. So let's go down to, let's go down to 10. All right, so I had the blow up towards the tail end of the cast, thinking due to some wind, but it's probably going out there at least 50 to 55 feet, maybe closer to 60. Okay, that was a really, really bad wood. It took me like 10 minutes to pick that out. So let's try a couple more casts. Okay, so I'll have to say that this Tatula Elite can handle upper end bait finesse weights pretty good. It's a very free casting reel for being a, a Daiwa. And yeah, the casting range is definitely really, really good. So now I'm getting the hang of this 1 8 ounce lure. I can't seem to get more distance out of this, but what you're seeing is very, very doable. Shit, I almost snagged myself. And it looks like 10 on the mag dial is the limit for this particular lure. All right, guys, let's go home and talk about it. Okay, guys, so when I got home and reviewed the casting footage for the Tatula Elite, I realized that a lot of those really, really long casts that were made with this topwater lure went so far back into the shadow line of the trees that a lot of you guys probably can't even see where they landed. So because of that, I took these two reels the very next day and decided to try to get some side-by-side -side casting footage to let you guys see what happened. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to go as low on the brakes with the Elite as I was the day before because the wind was just blowing all sorts of different directions but uh, just check out the footage and try to see which you think was casting farther more consistently and then we'll talk about it
Okay, so I have some good news and I have some bad news. Now let's go over the good news first. Now the good news is that ultimately the Tatula Elite long cast does cast farther than the Tatula 100. And also more good news is that the Retrieve is noticeably smoother and more precise. And that's probably due to this aluminum handle side plate. And I could really notice because when I was making those really long casts, I would burn that top water lure back in as fast as I could just to save time and get myself out of the heat faster. And while the Elite isn't, you know, light years ahead of the 100 in smoothness, it was definitely noticeably smoother. Okay, and the third piece of good news is that you can see that the Elite has a great casting range. So of course it can bomb the heavier topwater lures, but it can also handle the quarter ounce lures really, really easy. And as you can see, it handled that one eighth ounce lure really, really easy as well. And that's with, you know, 10 pound line and on a rod that's not even rated to handle that light lure. So if you stick this Elite on a dedicated finesse rod and probably fill the uh, line not even halfway with appropriate line like a four to six pound line, you can probably definitely go bait finessing with this reel on the upper range of bait finesse weights. All right, so let's get to the bad news. Now, the first bit of bad news is that while the Elite does cast farther than the 100, it's really not by a lot. You'd be lucky to get 10 foot farther, and that is only if certain criteria is met. And when I say certain criteria, I mean if there's hardly any wind, and if you can snap your wrist and time it to where this lure or any other, you know, top water lure or lure with a weight system doesn't tumble through the air. So if the lure tumbles through the air, you're not going to see any kind of distance advantage. But if you snap your wrist at the right time at the end of the cast and the lure flies through the air like this, then you will see a little bit of increase in casting distance. Now, of course, you know, five to eight feet doesn't sound like a lot. And that's true. But, you know, the Corrado DC wasn't really outcasting their Corrado K by a lot as well. And the only real way you're going to see a huge increase in casting distance is if you made this spool taller and you just gave it a, you know, a entirely different braking system, like a centrifugal braking system. Because since the spool dimensions are the same and the brakes are virtually the same, it's really, really hard to engineer any kind of drastic casting distance increase out of two reels that are basically the same. Okay, so that leads us to the next bad news is that, you know, are all these, you know, differences, you know, the nominal casting increase during certain situations and also the slightly smoother, more refined retrieve, is that worth an extra 80 bucks? Now, to me, the answer is going to be no. Now, I know it's got a aluminum handle side plate, but so did the first generation tattoo list. So, this reel, in my opinion, is more likely a $200 reel, and that's probably where it should have been priced at. Not sure if a lot of people are going to be spending 240 bucks for a Tatula, especially when the Corrado DC is only $10 more. And then of course you got that SLX DC that's, what, uh, 60 or $50 less. So it's going to be a hard sell for Daiwa with this Tatula Elite priced like it is. And one more thing was that it was really hard to see the numbers out there what Daiwa should have done and that would have made this thing look really really sick was to color the dial like this glossy piano black and of course leave the numbers silver that would have looked really really sharp and help guys with eye problems like I do so there we go guys 
Tatula Elite long cast. Well, it does cast farther than its much cheaper older brother. I'm not sure if it casts $80 farther. So I'm gonna be putting this Tatula Elite and a lot of other videos. I may take it out and see if it can bait finesse out of the box. If you guys want to see that, let me know. But uh, there we go, and thanks a lot.